Welcome to the Year of the Spirit Life, where we are experiencing the Zoe, which is the God kind of life, the kingdom life. That is why I'm bringing to you kingdom divine messages that are meant to transform your mentality and to transform your mindset for you to be able to live according to God's original plan of dominion and rulership. So grab your Bible, your notebook, and your pen for you to write down the vision that you are going to walk through in this coming year. Be blessed as you watch. Thank you for joining us for another Spirit-filled message with Prophet Fadzai brought to you by Revelation of Christ Church Worldwide. We bring comfort to God's people through the revelation of the Word and prayer. We hope that this message will be a blessing to you and help you understand the kingdom and enjoy the spirit life. Now, let's get into the message. Moses, whenever he was tired, the Amalekites were winning the battle. Moses is your pastor today. Moses is a human being. Your pastor is a human being. The secret now is that each time he was having fatigue, tired, about to quit, the battle would come against you. Remember, Moses is the one who has been given a task to watch over your souls. So if the watchman is sleeping, the enemy will enter. If the watchman is tired, the enemy will attack. So appreciation of pastors is not supposed to be a one-day event. It's supposed to be a continuous thing. Appreciating. You know, the Bible says, the joy of a man of God comes when his children grow spiritually. So whenever I preach a message, sometimes I get so frustrated, uh, have mercy on me. I preach a message on Sunday here. On Monday, a person among you here calls me or sends me a message for God to speak about what I was preaching on Sunday. Man of God, how can I handle this situation? But I preached about it yesterday. Where were you? In my heart, that would be my question. This is what I was talking about. Why are you asking me? It shows that you are not growing. It shows that you are not paying attention. So when it's that now, I'm burdened in my heart. How can we make this person grow? So this is Moses Remember when these guys were not there, when I was asking this man, he was saying he's tired. He wants to quit. Many times, pastors, including myself, we get so tired. We want to quit. We want to leave everything. We want to run away. We want to commit suicide. Pastors can confess here. We want to commit suicide. You have no idea what the ministry does to us as individuals. What it does to our families. What it does to our finances, Aaron, and you. Imagine that Moses was surrounded by thousands of the children of Israel, but only two got the ability to perceive that we need to raise the hands of, of Moses. Out of all the people, only two, just these two people, and then they won the battle. Ask yourself when you are sitting there, are you part of that crowd or you are part of the two? Remember the scripture in the same book of Genesis, it teaches us about Abraham. It says Abraham had over maybe 400 servants, maid servants and uh, men servants. A lot of them. But when he was contending with God in prayer at night, he was asking God for a son. He said, I'm in my old age, Lord. I need a son. So which means all these 400 people around Abraham were not sons, but servants. Abraham was looking at them and he could not find a son amongst them. That he would receive a blessing through. The nations would receive a blessing through. You are surrounded by servants. So as you are a child of God, a believer, there are many people maybe who are not part of this ministry. You come from a certain ministry. You are visiting. In your ministry, even those who are watching online, are you a son or a servant? 
The same applies in your journey with Christ in the kingdom of God. Are you a servant of God or a son of God? Two different things. Servants can be fired. Servants, they want to impress the master. When they see the master, they start cleaning because so that the master can increase the salary. Those are servants, like how you behave at your workplace. You have to perform for you to be recommended. But my son does not need to clean my car for me to pay his school fees. My son does not need to wash my shoes for me to buy food for her, for him or for her. There's a difference between a servant and a son. So this is a lesson for you when it comes to servants of God. Your pastor, be like Aaron, be like you. Whenever this man, Moses, feels supported by this team, you win the battle. Many of the battles that come to the church today, it is simply because Aro, I mean Moses is weary. Moses' hands are down. Attack in the church. Attack in people's lives. Attack in the marriages. Attack in finances. Hear me and hear me very well. Any attack you see in the church, coming to church, this is the reason. The hands of Moses are tired. Moses does not have an Aaron and a you that lifts up his hands. The Bible is saying Elisha was sitting together with his elders, with his team. And when danger was coming, Elisha told the team that go and block the door, shut the door, block the door so that the enemy must not enter. So why was Elisha saying that? Block the door to the elders while I hear what God is saying. That's why on chapter 7, verse 1, now a prophecy came. Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. By this time, tomorrow, now a prophecy has come. How did the prophecy come? Because everyone in that room took their role. The elders went to shut the door and stop the enemy from coming in. While Elisha was in his office of hearing what God is saying. If Elisha took the role of busy trying to shut the door, there was not going to be a prophecy. That's why there was drought. The same applies in the church. The same applies in our Christian life. If there's a prophet that God has assigned for you in your life, let the prophet of God operate in his office and not be worried about the door. Once the prophet is worried about the door, Monday is busy running around, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, running around of how you can be in comfort. Which means Sunday there is not going to be a word. Because he never had the time to hear what God is saying. Because he was busy running around finding where are cheap chairs, where can I buy cheap speakers, where can I buy these things. Because every other person would have abandoned their post. Tell your neighbor, stand on your post. The disciples, or the apostles rather, at one point told the church when there was an issue of the distribution of food, I believe it's in the book of Acts, they said, find amongst yourself men full of the spirit and wisdom and assign them to take care of this thing of dishing food and giving hampers while we focus on the ministry of the word and prayer. The power of God or the Holy Spirit was going to be quenched if the disciples focused on food hampers, their office was to focus on the word and prayer. And other disciples are assigned to give the widows the food and everything. While the apostles are in their office, then the church was very prosperous. Do you understand? The church became very prosperous. The church became very powerful. Because everyone was standing in their office. It came to pass afterward that Jesus went throughout every city and every village. Listen very carefully. Jesus went through every city and every village. If you are a pastor and you are listening to me right now, ask yourself, have you gone to every city 
and every village preaching the word. You see that the standard of Jesus Christ is very high. Even in this ministry, we have not gone to every city, every village. Let's find out how was it possible for Jesus to go to every city and every village. He was going throughout every city and village. What was he doing? He was preaching and showing or showing or uh, demonstrating the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. So Jesus was not just preaching. If he preaches that God multiplies food, he demonstrates it. If he preaches healing, he demonstrates it. If he talks about the prophetic, he demonstrates it. He was showing or acting the good news by his action. There's a time when he prayed for a man called, I mean, who had a legion of de demons. And then the next verse said, after that, they brought beautiful clothes and dressed that man. Which means they had the ability to buy clothes to give to this man. Are you understanding? So where were those things coming from? He was showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. So Jesus had a very powerful team. Jesus, God himself, needed a team to make the work of God prosper. When there's no team that supports, when there's no team that prays for, when there's no team that honors, when there's no team that appreciates the work of God quickly crumbles. Who were there? There were 12 disciples. Then there were certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. So these women were walking with Jesus, supporting Jesus, encouraging Jesus, appreciating Jesus. Why? Because there's something that Jesus had done, not what Jesus what is going to do. Many people who come to church, they are doing whatever they are doing, saving because of what Jesus is going to do, not what he has already done. Wrong mentality of servanthood in the church. You save in the kingdom because of what he has done, not what he is going to do. That is why when nothing happens, you leave discouraged. Because your mentality was wrong from the beginning. These women were with Jesus because they had been healed of evil spirits. So if you have been prayed for, you have been delivered, you have been healed, you have grown spiritually, you must support what has delivered you. This is according to the scripture, not according to me. They were with Jesus because they were delivered. Simply because an evil spirit was taken out of them, they said, I'm going to support this man. How many of us are supporting because of what has happened to us? Oh, we are supporting because we want a job. I clean in the church because I want marriage. I clean in the church because I want a job. I clean in the church because I want breakthrough. Not I clean in the church because I was once in the world. And he saved me. You heard the testimony, someone saying, I used to be a heavy drinker. Many of us, we don't see those things as testimonies. Because the world has corrupted the church. Material things are the ones we think they are only the blessing that God can do. Do you know there are many people who go through counseling and whatever to stop drinking, to stop drugs. Do you know there are many people who waste a lot of money. They go to rehab and all those things. But someone was touched by the hand of Jesus. And all those things left immediately. And then they chose to say, I'm going to follow here and walk here. Healed of evil spirits and infirmities. There's one testimony that hurts me. I'm not a woman. I've never experienced the pain of period pains. But I've seen people experiencing it. And I don't even wish to have that pain myself. When a person stands here and says, God delivered them from that pain... And then the church just says, uh, they really don't understand what God has done for that person. It's one of the testimonies that are so undermined. 
A person says, God delivered me. I used to have excruciating menstrual pains, but now they are gone. If I can call ladies here, they will testify how that, let me call it a thing, that thing is painful. So imagine a person has been delivered from that. They know. The one who has been delivered knows how deep the situation is. But because we have been corrupted by the world, we don't see healing or deliverance from infirmities as the power of God. We think being blessed with a job, with a house, with a car, those are the only blessings God can do. My God is not that cheap. So these people were ministering to Jesus from their what? Substance. Out of their substance. Which means they were supporting the ministry of Jesus. They took care of Jesus. I, I, I believe when we're talking about substance, we know what substance is. They were not ministering to Jesus through prayer. They were not interceding for Jesus, these people. They were ministering to him through what? Their substance. It came to pass afterward. You see that word afterward? It means before this, something had happened in the past. So if you go home, you read the previous verse, you'd find that there was a woman who came when Jesus was eating in the house of the Pharisee and then she broke the alabaster, kissed Jesus' feet, honored him, embraced him. The scripture says that oil was expensive. And after that, so you see, it's a shadow picture of the support. I'm, you see women, women are so blessed. I thought the women were going to support me. Women are so blessed. <laughs> women are so blessed because they are the ones who are holding this ministry. We were seeing Simon Peter and all these guys walking with Jesus. But behind the scenes, there was Mary Magdalene. There was Joanna. There was Susanna. There was all those things. Salome. We were making sure that they were supporting the ministry with their substance. I believe there were Proverbs 31 women. You know Proverbs 31, the Bible says they wake up early in the morning to go and work for their families. They are always at the marketplace. So these women, I believe, they had businesses. I would like to believe so. They were not sleeping, they were not housewives. Forgive me. They were not just housewives. They were in the marketplace. In Proverbs 31, it says when they are in the marketplace, they are carrying the pride of the husband. That when people look at the wife, they say, who is the husband of this wife? Not the other way around. When they see you with makeup, they say, hey, who is the husband of this one? They were seeing what the women were doing with their hands at the marketplace. And then the husband receives the pride. To say, Blessed is the man that married this woman. So here's the question. Do you think that Jesus needed what these people were ministering to him with? Not at all. Jesus was God. Jesus is still God. But the Bible still speaks about when there is ministration of substance to what has carried you, there is always a great reward. If you jump to after Jesus ascended to heaven, there's a woman, I would like to believe her name, her name is Tab Tabitha or Dorcas, passed away. The man of God, Peter, had to pray because there was a good report that this woman that is dying here is the biggest partner of this ministry. Is supporting the work of God. Is supporting the kingdom. Is supporting the church. She's making coats and clothes for everyone here. We cannot afford to lose this person. And Peter went with evidence in the courts of heaven and pleaded the case for Dorcas. And when the, the Bible says, show forth your strong reasons. Hallelujah. Show forth your what? Your strong reasons. He went and showed forth his strong reasons as to why Dorcas had to be raised from the dead. There are people when they are going through a challenge in this ministry, a certain disappointment, delay, setback, I go before the Lord. Lord, this person, I saw them buying this speaker. Why is their child dying? I do that many times. Why are they sick? 
Why have they been retrenched from work? They did one, two, three in the kingdom. When my hands were tired, they came to lift my hands. So why are you repay, repaying them with trouble? Then sometimes God gives me an answer of what is happening. But there is always restoration that comes forth to everyone who takes part in pushing the gospel forward. For you to be sitting here listening to me today or watching by television, Jesus is for free. But ministry is expensive. Let me say it again. The gospel is free. Jesus is free. But ministry is expensive. For you to see me, those who are watching online, there are certain gadgets and equipment that are transmitting what is happening here to be shown throughout the world. Those things, they don't come by anointing. They came because there's a Dorcas, there's a Mary Magdalene, there's a Tabitha, there's a Susanna, there's a Joanna Samuel. We're saying, this ministry or this kingdom delivered me. I must support it so that other people can be delivered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me finish by saying this. When I look at the life of Mar Mary Magdalene, when you go and study, you'd realize that this lady was once maybe a prostitute in the past, and then she was saved, and she became one of the closest disciples of Jesus. So imagine all the other people she left at the tavern. She was busy in an assignment to win them from there to come where she has seen the light. But many of us today, where you have been delivered from, you turned your back and you never went to deliver others that you left there. Which means we have become selfish Christians. We must be having sleepless nights. If God delivered you from a shrine of Sangomas and you just come and hide in the church here without working towards going back there to deliver those that are still there, Sometimes you might not be able to do it with your own ability. But remember, many of us, we were saved through messages that were preached in a crusade. And there's someone who was not preaching in that crusade, but who financed that crusade. So he's the one who won me. We give credit to the pastor to say, this pastor is a soul winner. But there are also soul winners who just give to the crusade. There are soul winners who just put fuel for the bus that is going to the crusade. There are soul winners who buy a camera to film you saying, I received Jesus. They have taken part also in winning that soul. So appreciation of pastors is not a one-day event. Let me say it this way. You are not actually appreciating a pastor like I'm speaking for myself. You are actually sowing a seed that you will reap in your account. Because the word of God never lies. Those who receive a prophet in the name of the prophet will re receive a what? A prophet's reward. So the reward is guaranteed only if you are willing and obedient. So in you honoring, submitting, acknowledging, regarding in the highest manner, with high esteem, those that God has put upon you or above you to watch over your soul. What happens? These people, they've been given a, a task to, to give an account over you. When you do that, you're making them to do the work of God with joy. And each time, let me stop here and make you understand something. God's business is about men. That is why we are all here today. God is content about what? People. That is, only, that is God's business in this world. People. So, the more you do good things to people, the more you touch God's hearts. The more you do bad things to people, the more you fight God's heart as well. So, each time you are doing good, you are making God happy. Each time you are doing bad to other people, you are making the heart of God happy paint because God is in the business of what? Of people. So since God is in the business of people, 
he has assigned people, spiritual people, to watch over his people. So these people, the scripture is saying, honor them, respect them, reverence them, submit to them, so that their work may be full of joy. So when a, a servant of God is full of joy, he's representing the joy of God in his heart, and then it will be profitable to you. But if you make their job a burden, you heard what the scripture is saying, it will not be profitable to you. That is why one gentleman here was saying, there is a secret here. If the man or the woman of God gives you a smile, you heard him, that smile is magical. There's no person who smiles. I'm not talking about that smile that you guys give each other at, at the mall or at your workplaces to say, let, let it just pass. I'm talking about a smile that is portraying the message in the heart. When a person is genuinely happy with you, you will see it on the face. So that joy, that happiness towards you provokes blessings of God. The pain, the, 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 the overthinking about you, how troublesome you are, automatically attracts Yes. Let me finish by saying in Numbers chapter 12, verse 1, there is a man called Moses. Moses was told by God not to marry an Ethiopian woman. And Moses went to marry an Ethiopian woman. There was a law, I believe, in Deuteronomy that says there must never be intermarriages. A vendor must not marry a twana. A twana must not marry a pedi. A pedi must not marry a zulu. That was the law that they were given. No tribal intermarriages. You must marry people from your own. And Moses went on to marry an Ethiopian woman. When Moses did that, Aaron and Miriam, Miriam was Moses' sister, came to him and said, why did you marry an Ethiopian woman. God said you must not marry. Then the Bible said God came down in a cloud and said to Miriam, were you not afraid to speak against my servant, Moses? But Miriam in the natural was very correct according to the word. She was very right. But whatever she spoke, in the spirit she was rejected immediately. That no matter you are right according to the word, but in the spirit, this person has a higher spiritual rank than you. Were you not afraid to speak against my servant, Moses? Then what happened? Delay came to the children of Israel. Why am I saying this? The words might not let me give you a very good example. Your parents, your biological parents can be angry with you in their heart. And they won't open their mouth to curse you. But in the spirit, they have a higher rank than you. So that worry in their heart automatically attracts a curse over you. Automatically, in the spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because they are above you. So when they are grumbling in their heart, their anointing is very intelligent. When they are grumbling about you in their heart without saying anything, that grumbling automatically attracts negativity on you. The same example I'm giving about Miriam. Miriam was speaking to Moses in the natural because they are brother and sister. But in the spirit, God is saying, no, you cannot touch this man. David was running away from Saul in the physical. He had all the power and the ability to destroy this man. But he understood that in the spirit, this man was once God's anointed. I don't have power to touch him. No matter he is after me and he is wrong and I'm right. But I don't have spiritual authority to address him. Do you get the sense? So the danger now is that anyone above you spiritually that God has placed for you, if they are grumbling in their heart about you without even saying, anything. The spirit picks it up. If you go and read and continue that scripture, even Moses himself prayed for the sister. When God said, leprosy upon you for speaking against Moses, Moses prayed and said, God, 
please heal this lady. Heal my sister. And God said, no. She must get out of the camp for seven days. So delay came. Judgment came to the children of Israel. Everyone was delayed because there was one person who did not honor the spiritual rank of Moses. Not the physical rank. In the physical rank, she was even an older sister. If you go and read from the beginning of the word, I believe she's the one who was even uh, with Moses in the water there and introduced them to the, uh, uh, to the daughters of Pharaoh. I would like to believe so. So, so she, she was a deputy parent to Moses. She had the authority to tell him that, young man, you cannot marry this. But then God appeared and said, who are you to speak against my servant? Moses. Hallelujah. So, honor must not just be physical. Honor must be even in the heart, in the spirit. This other young man here said, I'm going to kneel down and my kneeling is out of genuine sincerity. <laughs> you heard him? <laughs> because even a person can kneel while their heart is standing. Are you aware of that? Yes, a person, a person can walk like this as if they are humble when they are passing through you. But deep inside their heart, they are walking like this. So humility must be in their heart and also in the, what? In the physical. So we are going to enter a new year, 2023. A year full of God's favor, full of God's blessing. But the secret, the secret, the secret that I'm giving you, honor is still important. Honor is very important, especially when you want to receive spiritual things. Sometimes there are people who get close to me in the physical. I run away at times. They think I'm moody. They think I'm grumpy when I do that. But I'm saving them because I'll be seeing they are becoming too familiar. So to protect them and to protect their reward, I have to run away from the physical so that they keep on relating with the prophet in the man. Because the blessing is not coming from this man. The blessing comes, the reward comes from the prophet within. So if you get too familiar, too familiar, I realize that, oh, now this person is no longer seeing the prophet. He's seeing the brother and the friend. I withdraw immediately to save you. Sometimes you'll be offended because you are not spiritual. You, are, you think I'm blocking you, yet I'm saving you. It is for your own account. In Jesus' name. I hope you have been blessed by this message. 2023, you must go with this message, run with this message, and serve God in spirit, in truth. It must also appear in your physical. We must see that this is genuine servanthood. This is genuine sonship. This is genuine discipleship. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. May God hey there. I'm F.J. Moses, the senior pastor of Revelation of Christ Church Worldwide, based in Midrand, South Africa. And I hope this Spirit Life Kingdom message has blessed you so tremendously that you are going to experience the God's original plan for your life. For more of these Spirit-filled messages, don't hesitate to contact us on the information on your screen. Good morning and be fruitful.